Hi friends, my name is Kalpesh and welcome back to my official YouTube channel Automotive Crafts. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe this channel for more updates about the automobile engineering. Today, I will explain you guys the tire access system in context with the vehicle dynamics. So don't go anywhere and watch this video till the end. So let's discuss about the tire access system in context with the vehicle dynamics. So first we need to understand the requirement of the tire access system. So why does it require? For precise description of operating condition of tire during the various uh, operating condition how tire behaves or we can say how tire responds to the inputs provided by the driver to understand the such behavior of tires we need some basic system some standard system so we can describe that behavior of tire in a proper manner and the second most important requirement is to estimate the effect of forces and moments acting on the tire we all are aware with the various loads acting on the vehicle that I have already discussed in my previous video for the dynamic axle loading. So what are the effect produced by that forces and moments on the tires to understand such effects and to explain such effects compulsory we require some uh, standard system. So this tire axis system it is the standard access system which is defined by SAE which is Society of Automotive Engineers and the standard uh, prescribed by the SAE it is SAE J670 this is this SAE's prescribed standard second organization which has defined the tire access system in the same manner is the ISO it stands for the International Organization for Standardization. Let's see what is inside in the tire access system which is prescribed by the uh, SAE and the ISO. This figure indicates the typical tire access system which is prescribed by the SAE and here we can consider here we can consider this is the front right hand side tire front right hand side tire and we are going to see the uh, each terminology step by step so let's get started the first term that we need to understand it is the wheel plane so wheel plane you can consider as it is the central plane of the tire normal to the axis of rotation this is the axis of rotation rotation axis the plane the central plane which is passing through the tire and which is normal to the axis of rotation it is known as the wheel plane so this dotted line it indicates the wheel, wheel plane you can consider this is also the wheel plane the second important terminology we need to define is wheel center the intersection of this spin axis and the wheel plane the intersection of the axis of rotation of the spin axis and the wheel plane it is defined as the wheel center the next one is the center of tire contact or sometimes it is also called as the center of contact patch so the intersection of the wheel plane the intersection of the wheel plane and the projection of the spin axis onto the road plane here is the road plane here is the road plane I am indicating the road plane by RP so this is the road plane so the center of tire contact is the, so the center of tire contact you may define as it is the intersection of the wheel plane and wheel plane and the projection of the spin axis onto the road plane this is the projection so this becomes a center of tire contact
the next one is longitudinal force fx the component of the force acting on the tire by the road in the plane of road and parallel to the intersection of the wheel plane with the road plane is known as the longitudinal force it is nothing but the simple uh, force component of the longitudinal force which is acting on the whole vehicle again i am emphasizing on the word component it's a component of the longitudinal force acting on the vehicle so the force component in the direction of wheel travel our wheel is traveling in this direction we can observe with the help of this indication this v it is the linear velocity it indicates the linear velocity of a uh, tire and this omega it indicates the angular velocity of the tire so the force it is the force component in the direction of wheel travel which is sometimes called the tractive force 2 so it is a tractive force and considering the direction of travel here it is the forward direction so here fx we are considering as the positive term positive tractive force if this fx is indicated in the negative x direction then we are considering as a negative tractive force the next term is lateral force the component of the force acting on the tire by the road in the plane of a road and normal to the intersection of wheel plane with road plane so the lateral force that means it is the component of the force acting on the tire by road while vehicle is about to move in the plane of road and normal to the intersection of wheel plane with the road plane that is called the lateral force again i am going to emphasize this longitudinal force affects and the lateral force these all are the component of the force that we have already defined in my previous video uh, of dynamic axle load so you can refer that video uh, and the li link for the same has been provided in the into the description below so click on it and enjoy it the normal force the component of force acting on the tire by the road which is normal to the plane of road which is normal to the plane of road it is called the normal force the normal force is negative in magnitude the normal force negative in the magnitude so whenever we are considering the opposite force which is the vertical force it is always considered as a positive here is the vertical force so these are the normal force which is acting uh, due to the vertical load on the vehicles and this uh, vertical reaction force is generated it is considered as the positive term the next term is overturning moment overturning moment so moment acting on the tire by road in the plane of road and parallel to the intersection of the wheel plane with the road plane that is called the overturning couple it can be indicated by the mx this moment is the overturning moment which is in the road plane always the second moment that is called the rolling resistance moment which is indicated by my it is in the lateral direction it is with respect to the lateral direction that's why it can be indicated by my simple so the moment acting on the tire by road in the plane of road and normal to the intersection of wheel plane with the road plane that is called the rolling resistance that is called the rolling resistance moment in this case our vehicle is moving in the forward direction in the x direction and uh, this rolling resistance 
it is due to the friction produced at the contact patch here you can consider the, this is the contact patch of tire which remains in the contact with the uh, road and we are con uh, considering all the effect of forces and moments about the uh, center of tire contact so the next one is alignment moment the moment acting on the tire which is produced by the road which is normal to the plane of road which is normal to the plane of road it is known as a alignment moment so the next term is slip angle the angle between the direction of the angle between the direction of wheel heading and the direction of travel is known as a slip angle this is the direction of wheel heading and this is the direction of travel at the contact patch we can consider the tread pattern which remains in the contact with the uh, road so uh, they are continuously facing some lateral forces while our vehicle is about to turn so during this situation this vehicle or we can say wheel heading direction and the direction of travel it uh, separates and the angle generated in between this two axes it is known as a slip angle it is always indicated by the alpha the next term is the camber angle so the angle between the wheel plane and the vertical axis the angle between the wheel plane and the vertical axis this indicates the vertical axis and here this dotted line indicates the uh, wheel plane so uh, the angle between the wheel plane and the vertical axis it is known as the camber angle which is indicated by gum yes the camber if the vehicle's top is uh, leaning towards the outside while observing from the front you can consider as the positive camber angle and if the vehicle's top is leaning inside while observing from the front you can consider as the negative camber apart from these terms one more term is there the distance from the center of tire contact to the wheel center here is the center of tire contact we can consider this this line indicates the uh, this line indicates the center of tire contact and this line indicates the wheel center so the distance between this two it is known as the loaded radius this is what about the SA tire axis system thank you thank you friends thank you for watching this video with attention if you haven't subscribed this channel yet I'm requesting to subscribe this channel don't forget to hit the bell icon so so you will get notification whenever I'm uploading my video on this channel and don't forget to like and share with your friends thank you thank you so much